Junior's Tony Oliva. Tony batted 321 to win the batting championship in a close down to the last week race with Carl Yastrzemski, the newly elected team captain of the Boston Red Sox. Tony Oliva, a left-handed batter, and quite a player he is. Tony won the American League batting championship in his very first year in the big leagues as a rookie. Nobody down in the first inning, no score, he's a pitch. There's a drive to center field, Jose Tarnival moving after the ball, and he has got it, that retires the Twins. So in the first inning for Minnesota, no runs, hits or errors, nobody left on after one full inning of play. It's the A's nothing, the Twins nothing. Hi fans, this is Lynn Ferris. It's a red letter day. Today marking the beginning of another great athletics baseball season and thanks to the friendly folks at GSC, we're here to bring you the A's 1966 game. So remember for lots of baseball fun and excitement every day, tune in here on KCMO for the A's game. Brought to you by the Kansas City area offices of the GSC Loan Company. 12 conveniently located offices in the Kansas City area to serve you. Phone Grand 15373. You know, they're the people to see when you need money. You can actually make all the arrangements over the phone. Just call GFC's friendly Bob Adams at Grand 15373. You can't beat the GFC brand of friendliness and quick service. So if you need some cash quickly from $25 to $2,000, call friendly Bob Adams, Grand 15373. GFC Loan Company, four offices in Kansas. One is located in Overland Park and one in Mission in the Mission Shopping Center. Leading off of the Athletics in the top half of the second inning, the A's catcher Bill Bryan. Manny Jimenez, whom we mentioned a little while ago, has not come to financial terms with the Athletics front office, is sitting with A's owner Charlie Finley in a box seat. Charlie has made him an offer, and Manny says, I have to think it over. So Jimenez is not in uniform today in the most startling development of opening day of 1966. Here's the pitch to Bryan. Sharp breaking curve is inside a low ball one. Bill Bryan, who'll be playing behind the plate and at first base for the Athletics this year, is catching today. Bill has really hit the ball solidly all spring. The pitch, high pop-up on the left side of the infield. The shortstop for size is calling for the ball. Now Valespino runs him off coming in towards the infield, and Sandy makes the catch, one away. With Versailles going out and Val Espino coming in and both owning tremendous speed, they're going to cover a lot of ground out of that area this year. One down in the second. Here is the A's first baseman, Ken Harrelson, who led the Athletics in home runs and runs batted in last year. Ken had five home runs to lead the A's in home runs this spring. The pitch to him. Fastball strike, it's called. Veteran American League umpire and one of the best ball and strike umpires in pro baseball, Larry Knapp, is working behind the plate this afternoon. Here's the pitch. Curveball misses outside. In Grant and Hunter, we are seeing two of the fastest working pitchers in the American League this afternoon. They're fast for several reasons. They like to get the ball and throw it. And they also usually throw strikes pretty consistently. There's a curve fouled off. One ball, two strikes. Fielding the ball over in foul territory, the A's third base coach, Luke Appling, who was our pregame warm-up show guest today. Luke would like to have $100 for every professional season opener he's ever seen. Played with the White Sox 20 years. Here's a one and two pitch. Curveball to Harrelson. Misses low. It's two and two now. Well, it's been a long, hard grind since the late part of February for these baseball players in spring training. They took it fairly slowly and finished fast and are in top shape. Here's the pitch. Curve. Strike three. It's called. Harrelson goes down. So there are two away as Mudcat Grant just broke off a major league curveball over the outside corner. Here's left-handed swinging Larry Stahl, the A's left fielder, who has made one great play already. With the big league season underway and not yet an inning and a half old, we have already seen two spectacular defensive plays. Larry Stahl.
Stahl has pretty good power. Here's a pitch. Low and away, ball one. He has hit seven big league home runs. Five of them have been hit against the Minnesota Twins. He has played very little in the big league, so his home run production is really an outstanding thing. Here's a pitch. Curveball high. Two balls and no strikes. The Athletics will open their 1966 season at home at Municipal Stadium next Tuesday night against these same twins. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Low and a wave ball free. On deck for Kansas City, Dick Green. Here's a pitch. Strike is right in there. Three balls, one strike. Grant got a late start. In spring training, he was a holdout. He and Kyle Griffith really had a battle on their hands before they came together on contract terms. 3-1 pitch. Stahl hits it up in the air down the third baseline. Foul territory. Harmon Killebrew runs Luke Gaffling out of the coaching box and makes the catch. And that retires the athletics here in the second inning of play. Mudcat Grant has mowed down the first six Kansas City batters after an inning and a half to score the A's nothing, the Twins nothing. Well, let's check in on scores of other games. In the American League, after three innings of play, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees, no score. That's Mickey Lolich dueling Whitey Four. The Boston Red Sox have taken a 3-2 lead over Baltimore after three full innings. Barber versus Wilson. Brooks Robinson homered in the first, nobody on. The California Angels and Chicago White Sox scoreless after one. That's Dean Chant versus Tommy John. In case you missed it yesterday, Cleveland Indians, using their pinch-hitting strength off the bench, beat Washington Senators 5-2. McDowell over Pete Rickard. Frank Howard hit his first homer of the year. In the National League, the Mets in Cincinnati already have been rained out for the second day in a row. Nothing in yet on the Cubs, San Francisco. Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Philadelphia, St. Louis, and Houston and Los Angeles all will be playing tonight. So one rain out and three night games. to lead off now for the Minnesota Twins. Harm had quite a year last year. He hit 269, battered 25 home runs, knocked in 75 runs. He's a right-handed batter. Jimmy Hunter throws a fastball right by a swinging killer Roo strike one. Well, there's no excitement, I don't think, outside of maybe the World Series and the All-Star Game, like opening day of the baseball season every year. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Hunter tries a fastball again, and he misses inside, trying to jam Harmon. It's one ball and one strike. Killebrew, Mencher, and Hall are scheduled for the Twins here in the second. No score in our game. Hunter's pitch. Inside, ball two. He has thrown three straight fastballs to Killebrew. Going to really take a blast to hit a home run into the left field seats here today. Here's the pitch. Curve. Over the plate, but low. All three. Hunter and Bryant thought they had that one. Billy Martin is the coach at third for the Twins, and Bob Lemon at first. Hunter gets the sign from Bryant. Swings into action. Here's the pitch. Curveball bounced on the ground to the left side. Causey, the shortstop, has it. There's his throw to Harrelson in the dirt, but Kenny digs it out. And there's one away. The batter now is Don Mencher, who hit 251 for the Twins last year with 22 home runs. Big Don knocked in 65 runs. His emergence as a consistent hitter against both right and left-handed pitching allowed the Twins to move Killebrew off first and put him at third base. Here's the pitch. High and outside, ball one. Oh, it's great to see those Major League scoreboards again, all lit up, indicating scores of other games around the country. And just in general, to get the baseball season underway, here's the bench. Outside, ball two. And Lynn and I will be traveling right with the Athletics through 162 games starting today. Broadcasting every day on the same radio station throughout Mid-America. And we're so happy that you've decided to join us today. Be sure to let all your friends know the stations that are carrying the A's games and to which you are listening. We'll have a lot of fun this summer. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Curveball. Venture hits it in the right center field up the alley. It's being 
chased by Turner, but he can't get it. It goes through to the fence. Hertzberger backing him up, picks the ball up. Here comes the throw back to the infield. It's a double for Don Mincher. So Don Mincher hits a drive between Turnable and Hertzberger in right center field for a two-base hit, the first hit of the 1966 season. And now here's Jimmy Hall, who hit 285 for average last year for the Twins. Jimmy hit 20 homers, knocked in 86 runs. He had a great year. The A's infield swung around a bit to the right. Tarnival playing over in right center field from his regular center field spot. Hunter's pitch on the way, outside, ball one. Dick Green and Wayne Causey conferring out on the infield. A runner at second base. One out. Last half of the second inning. No score between the A's and the Twins. Hunter pitches. A strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. The wind is definitely a factor in this game today. It has already made some easy plays rather tough. The wind blew that ball away from Tarnable just then as he chased it into right center field. Mencher hit it hard. There's no doubt about it, but Tarnable was being hindered by that wind. Here's a pitch. Way outside, ball two. These same two teams play right here again tomorrow afternoon, and pitching for Kansas City will be Raleigh Sheldon, and pitching for the Twins, Camilo Pasquale. Our airtime for our baseball warm-up show, 115 on many of these same stations, and for the broadcast itself, 125. Hunter's 2-1 pitch coming. High ball three. Hunter, who is basically a control-type pitcher, has been at the 3-1 level on two different batters here in this inning. Killebrew, who went for a curveball on 3-1 and grounded out. And out of Jimmy Hall. Ryan calls for a pitch. Hunter acknowledges. He walks in ball four. Now the Twins have a little uprising going here in the second inning. And that brings to the plate Earl Batty, right-handed batting catcher who hit just short of 300 last year. Earl hit 297, and I'll tell you, it's a big 297 when Batty hits it because of this. He is very slow, possibly one of the slowest runners in the American League, which means he doesn't get many infield hits during the course of the year. Earl has to hit that ball between fielders and infielders. Mighty fine player. This guy knocked in 60 runs last year. Hunter pitches. Fastball hit on the ground to Wayne Causey. He's got it down the green for one out. Over to first base, an easy double play, and that retires the side. Manny. An easy double play mark if he hits the ball on the ground with anybody else on. In the second inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. After two innings at the Met Stadium in the Twin Cities, the score, Kansas City nothing, Minnesota nothing. Now, KCMO Confidential, 60 seconds inside a great radio station. It's 5 a.m. at KCMO Radio. A slight figure hunched against the morning breeze and at the front door. In the background, the faint strains of Flatt and Scruggs' Flint Hills special can be heard as the all-night Milk Dicky show fades slowly into limbo. The studio door room, a briefcase of admin material is flung carefully onto the chair. A coat draped over what appears to be an antique Russian samovar. A body slumps into a chair with a sigh. <sighs> And suddenly... Good morning, world! The day takes on a bright new sheen on The Jack Elliott Show. Five hours of fun and fun. Special features of The Jack Elliott Show include agri-news, sports, weather, and the important news. Dial 81, KCMO for Jack Elliott. This has been KCMO Confidential. 60 seconds inside a great radio station. Kansas City Athletics to lead off the third inning. Here's Dick Green, the second baseman. He'll be followed by Ed Charles and the pitcher, Jimmy Hunter. Green last year for Kansas City batted 232. He had 15 home runs, knocked in 55 runs. 
Grant pitches. Green takes a look at a strike. It cost him. The ball's one strike. We're underway in the third inning of the first game of the 1966 season. In the fourth inning, Boston leads Baltimore three to two. The Yankees and Detroit scoreless in the fourth. Bouncing ball hit by Green to Armand Killebrew. The Twins third baseman throws him out, one away. Let's get Grant, who did not get his first start for the Twins last season until three weeks into the season, is the opening day pitcher here in 1966. And he feels since he won 21 games last year, not starting until three weeks after the season got underway. This should give him about three or four extra starts, and he might be a 25-game winner this year. Here's a pitch to Charles, and the A's third baseman takes a curve outside, ball one. The California Angels and the Chicago White Sox playing today in Chicago. No score in the third inning. The pitch, again, a curveball, misses outside. Kansas City nothing, Minnesota nothing. One out, third inning. The day of the big cats, one newspaper bill this day. The pitch, high fly ball, hit behind the plate, Earl Batty. Coming back, may have a play on it right in front of the screen. It hits on the screen, protecting the stand behind the plate. So Ed Charles is still alive. The count, two balls and one strike. Yes, the papers were saying it's a battle between cats. Mutt cat and catfish. And to continue along the veins of nicknames, Mudcat Grant has a brother by the name of Swampfire Grant, who used to be a pitcher. 2-1 pitch. Knocks him down, ball three. Good to see some colorful names back in baseball for a while. Baseball became a little bit staid in that respect. As you and I were growing up, most of us used to remember quite well the nicknames. Here's a pitch. Charles takes it inside and high, and the A's have their first base runner of the afternoon. As Ed Charles works, Mudcat Grant for a walk. The A's pitcher, Jimmy Hunter, comes up. Quite a story this young fella has given the baseball world. One time, most all baseball scouts had given up on him because part of his foot had been shot off. Here's the pitch. He bunts it right out in front of the plate and kicks off foul to the first base side. Hunter still, to this day, has quite a few puck shots in his foot, despite an operation that removed some 27 of them. At the Mayo Clinic up here in Minnesota, by the way, right after he signed the contract with the Athletics. Charles leads off first. Here's the pitch. He puts the ball hard out towards the mound, and it's bobbled momentarily by Grant. He hustles, picks it up, throws the first. He got his man on a fine, scrambling play. That Grant is quite an athlete. He went over to his left that time, trying to pick up a bunny ball by Hunter. The ball bounced off his glove. He fell down, but scrambled and while still on his knees, threw the first base to Bernie Allen covering, and he got Hunter. But Ed Charles advances the second on the sacrifice, and back to the top of the A's order we go for Jose Tarnabo. Base hit now could give the Athletics the lead in the ball game as Charles is at second base. Tartable skied out to right field his first trip. There's a curveball bounced out towards first base. Fair territory fielded by Mentor. He steps in the back and the A's don't score this inning. No runs are hit. The man left on. And after two and a half innings, the score, the A's nothing, the Twins nothing. Well, baseball in the air and on the air. What a treat it is for Monty and me to be here in the home of the 1965 American League champions. And fans, the important thing you want to remember is that we'll be facing this same ball club back at beautiful Municipal Stadium in Kansas City. And we hope you'll be with us in person at 7 o'clock starting time, April 19th. Why don't you get your tickets at the Plaza, 4628 Werner, Townhouse, Kansas City, Kansas, Macy's Downtown, the Blue Ridge Mall, Center Office, and the Cats Drug Stores, North Kansas City, 1914 Swift, and 75th and Metcalf. Now, both of those uh, Cats Drug Stores have tickets all day, every day, seven days a week. 
So get your tickets and be on hand with us and welcome the Athletics back to Kansas City, won't you? Against these same twins. As we start the last of the third inning, Bernie Allen, the Twins' second baseman who made a spectacular play, robbing Wayne Causey of a base hit. Here's the leadoff banner against Jimmy Hunter. Here's the pitch. Inside and high ball one. Bernie last year was about ready to give up baseball. He had had a knee operation the year before. The Twins, after spring training, sent him to the minor leagues to Denver, and he decided to give up baseball. There's a ball hit foul out of play. But the Twins front office talked him into staying in the game and playing for a while at Denver, seeing if he could get his knee into shape. He never did really get back in top shape last year. Bernie had a great year with the Twins, his rookie season in 1962. He hit 269 that year. The one-on-one pitch, curveball, rips into the right field corner, a base hit. Hershberger chasing the ball, it goes through his legs, down into the corner. Allen digging around first, going to second base, he's got a hold up there. Allen hit a line drive out into right field. Hershberger went after the ball. It went between his legs and into the corner. It goes as a base hit and an error on Hershberger. So there's the leadoff runner for the Twins on here in the third inning. The pitcher, Grant, is at the plate now. The A's looking for the bunt. Grant does not bunt. He hits the ball foul out of play. The Twins have had two base hits so far in the ball game. Nobody down here in the third. The pitch. There's the bunt. Down the first baseline, and it's staying right on the chalk line. Picked up by Harrelson. He tags his man out as he goes by. But Grant moves Allen over to third base with only one away. Back to zone oversized. Both pitchers have been called upon to sacrifice runners down, and they've both successfully done so. Versailles popped up to third base his first trip. Now we're getting a first look of the official 1966 season at the Kansas City Athletics. Defensive infield pulled in on the grass in the early innings to try to cut off a run. Al Dark plans to do this a lot. Hunter winding. Here's the pitch to Versailles. A curveball hit right back towards the mound. Hunter's got it. Holds the runner at third. Throws the first. He got him. What a curveball Hunter threw. Let's pause right here for station identification. This is the Kansas City A's Baseball Network. This is KCMO Radio, dial 81, Kansas City, Missouri. Currently 44 degrees with light rain and haze in Kansas City. Four minutes past two. At the Met Stadium in Minneapolis, St. Paul, this is Monty Moore with Lynn Ferris. Happy to have you join us today, and we hope that you'll make it a regular habit to keep your radio dial set right where it is throughout the 1966 baseball season. Here's Sandy Valdespino with two down. The infield can go back now, except for Ed Charles, the third baseman, who will play right about the line and attempted to bluff down the line by Bernie Allen as Hunter went into a full windup. And Hunter threw the ball that was fouled off. It looked for a moment as if Bernie Allen might be coming towards the plate. Ed Charles is over talking with Hunter now on the mound as Ed had tried to bluff the runner back into third base with a couple of slaps of the glove. Bernie has always been quite fast. I don't know if he's that fast, that he could steal home with two down like this. Now the 0-1 pitch. Smash by Ed Charles, out in left field. And the Twins lead one to nothing. Sandy Valdespino got an outside pitch. Hit the ball right by Ed Charles. It actually hit Charles Glove. As Charles made a dive to his right. So Valdespino gets credit for a base hit, a run batted in. The Twins lead one to nothing, two down, and here's Tony Oliva. Val 
Palestino, who can really fly. The runner at first gets the lead. Hunter steps off the rubber and drives him back in. The Twins, defending American League champions, not being picked by many of the writers or broadcasters to repeat. There's a bitch. Fouled out of play. Strike one. But here in the Twin Cities area, all their broadcasters and writers think the Twins can do it again. And the Twins players to a man feel they have a better ball club this year than the club that won the pennant last year. We'll see lots of them in the next week or so. The throw to first. Val Espino is back in. Our first 11 games of the 1966 season will be with the teams who finished first and second last year. The Twins and the White Sox. So the A's have their work cut out for them. Pitch. Bounce right back to the mound on one hop. Hunter's got it. Throws the first and down go the Twins. In the third inning, one run. Two hits. One big error. And one left on. After three innings of play at the Met Stadium, the score, Minnesota 1, Kansas City nothing. For complete sound and communications engineering in Kansas City, call Audio Communications Grand 15858. Let the experienced sales and engineering personnel work with you to solve your business or private communications problems. For modern sound reinforcement installation, intercommunication systems, both large or small, and paging systems from simple systems to complicated selective area paging installations, call Audio Communications. Private internal telephone systems, closed circuit television, and television distribution systems are designed and installed by Audio Communications. The best equipment available is used for every type of communication need. Equipment from nationally known companies such as Altec Lansing, Duquesne, General Precision Laboratories, and many others are regularly used on installations. The right equipment designed for the job, properly engineered, installed, and backed up by service, assures good communication systems. Audio Communications has the sound answer for your communication problem. Call Grand One Five Eight Five Eight for Audio Communications, a division of KCMO Broadcasting. The leadoff batter for the Athletics in the top half of the fourth inning, Mike Hirschberger, who grounded out to the first baseman his first trip. Grant starts him off with a ball in the dirt. One ball and no strikes to count. Well, Cleveland and Washington got the baseball season underway yesterday, and the Indians rallied for four runs in the ninth inning to beat Washington 5-2. to two. Batting heroes of that game yesterday, Colavito had three hits for the Indians. There's ball two to Hershberger. Max Alvis had three hits. And Sam McDowell was the winning pitcher in that game. He led the American League in strikeouts last year and started off pretty strongly again this year by striking out nine yesterday. Lynn has a note here on that Baltimore-Boston ball game about the Robinson guys. To steal a uh, phrase from Batman, Monty, the Robinson dynamic duo has struck. Brooks homered in the first, nobody on. And Frank Robinson has just homered in the fifth, nobody on. Well, those guys are going to score lots of runs this year, Baltimore. They're being fixed by a lot of people. There's ball three to Mike Hershberger. Frank Robinson, a great new star in the American League. Long time, great in the National League. Here's a pitch. Strike to Hershberger, three and one. Mike was taking all the way. Three balls, one strike count. The Twins one and the A's nothing. Hershberger gets back into the plate. Pitch. Fly ball hit deep in the right center field. Way back goes Tony Oliva. He's at the fence. He can't get it. It's off the fence. Hershberger on the way to second. He's digging around second, going to third. Here comes the throw across the infield, and Hershberger is in there with a triple. Tony Oliva crashed hard into the fence in right field. He got up off the ground, chased the carom, and made a strong throw all the way to third base. But Hershberger is in there with a triple. The first base hit of the year for the Kansas City Athletics. And here's Wayne Causey. The Twins center fielder Jimmy Hall was just over talking with Oliva. And their manager Sam Mealy stood up on the top step of the dugout to find out if Tony O were okay, and he is. 
So we'll continue now. The Twins infield will play halfway. They will not come in. The early innings to try to cut off the tying run. Here's the pitch to Causey. Foul ball. It's out of play. The Twins, of course, have all the mashers. They can hit the long ball. They're expected to score a lot of runs. Alvin Dark thinks it's foolish for a club that he doesn't think will score a lot of runs this year to give up runs easily in the early innings, which has long been something that many of us have wondered about. Here's a pitch outside to Causey. One ball and one strike. So many times you'll see a club early in the innings when a runner gets at third base, do as the Twins are doing. Back up, of course, they're trying to cut off what could be a big inning, and they'll give up the one run. 1-1 one, one pitch, Causey takes it high, ball two. And Hershberger might be bothering Mudcat Grant a little bit with a mad dash about 40 feet down the foul line as Grant goes into the windup. Wayne Causey, in a number of years, played with the Kansas City A's, the veteran in the ball club. 2-1 pitch, ground ball hit out towards the shortstop. For size, picks it up, holds Hershberger at third and throws him out. So Causey is out at first base, and Hershberger did have to hold on because the ball was hit to the left side of the infield. Though their infield was playing, not shallow, they were not playing too deep either, and of course, Versailles has that great arm. Now here's Bill Bryan. Bill had a fly ball to the shortstop his first trip. When leading 1-0, the A's have Hershberger at third. Grant Wise pitches to Bryan inside and high. He really cut that one loose. Ball one. Let's get Grant gets the sign from Batty. Throws. Brian looks at a strike over the outside corner. One ball and one strike. A well-placed pitch by Metcat Grant. Joe Pepitone has just hit a home run for the New York Yankees in the fifth inning with nobody on. So the score there is at least the Yankees one and the Tigers nothing. Pitch to Brian. Outside, ball two. Interesting sideline, I think, and a rather surprising one, I think, within the last couple of days developed in the Yankee camp when Mickey Mantle announced as the Yankees broke spring training camp that he was going to be the starting center fielder for the Yankees. He said, I'm ready after his operation, and he is in the starting lineup for the Yankees today. Pitch to Bryan, way outside, ball three. And Grant is obviously trying to keep that ball away from Bill Bryan's pulling power. Wind is a favoring wind for a left-handed batter today. If Ryan could get one up into the air, it could carry deep enough in right field easily to knock in Hershberger from third. 3-1 pitch. Change up. Ryan sweeps to miss it. He had a good cut at a change up. A mighty fine pitch for Mudcat Grant. He threw a straight change off his fastball when Ryan had to be looking for a fastball right there. Now, Mudcat Grant really needs a strikeout. Brian digs in. Here's the pitch. Bounce ball out to the first base side. That's going to knock in Hershberger. Brian is out as Bencher steps on the bag at first. But the ball game is all tied up at one and one. And Bill Brian gets a run batted in. So Bill hung in there against Mudcat Grant and knocked in the run. Here's Ken Harrelson, who was called out on strikes his first trip to the plate. Well, we're in the fourth inning of this ball game between the A's and the Twins. Last year, we had a lot of great games with Minnesota. The pitch to Harrelson, a snap curveball. A little high, ball one. The Twins, who won the championship last year, only beat the A's ten times. We beat them eight times. So we played the pennant winners pretty closely last year. Here's the 1-0 pitch inside to the Hawks, ball two. The A's under new manager Al Dark. A highly spirited group as they left spring training with 14 victories this year. 2-0 pitch, curveball to Harrelson is high, ball three. Larry Stahl on deck, there are two down here in the fourth. And the A's return home next Tuesday night to play these same Minnesota Twins. Game time, 7 o'clock. Debbie Bryant 
Miss America will be there to throw out the first ball for the A's. Three-o pitch. Ground ball hit in the hole between third and short. Cut off nicely by Killebrew. Great play. He throws him out. In the fourth inning, the A's got one run, one hit, no twin errors, and nobody left on base. In the middle of the fourth, the score, the A's won and the Twins won. Opening day for the 1966 baseball season. A day filled with all the excitement and pageantry that is baseball. For our Kansas City A's, it isn't quite the same as opening day at Municipal Stadium, but nonetheless, it is the first game. And in, and in addition to those of you listening to this broadcast presented by Ham's Beer, there are plenty of A's fans right here at Metropolitan Stadium. It is fitting that this first game is played here because Met Stadium is in the heart of the land of sky blue waters. Because today's game and every A's game is brought to you by Ham's Beer, brewed in the land of sky blue waters. From water is best for brewing. Lots of fans across the country call Ham's the baseball beer. Ham's also presents the play-by-play -play of all Minnesota Twins games. And on the West Coast, San Francisco fans gather around bottles of Ham's to follow the action of all the Giants games. Ham's is the baseball beer, but the reason you should try Ham's is because you'll like Ham's. It refreshes you best. Mighty fine words, Lynn Ferris, and certainly that's true. We are right here in the heart of America, where the Ham's Beer Main Brewery is located, just a few miles from the ballpark. Ready to go now with Harmon Killebrew. Last half of the fourth inning, Harmon grounded out to Wayne Causey, his first trip to the plate. Jimmy Catfish Hunter throws a fastball, swinging strike one. He threw his sinker that time. Jimmy holds his fastball differently when he wants it to sail and when he wants it to sink. He can turn that ball over when he wishes to. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Outside, one ball, one strike. The A's won and the Twins won. There's the curve to Killebrew, and it's fouled off, strike two. Tomorrow, Raleigh Sheldon will pitch for Kansas City, and on Thursday against the Twins, Fred Talbot. Camilo Pasquale tomorrow for the Twins, and Jim Cott on Thursday. One and two pitch. Fastball, Killebrew hits a sharp ground ball to Wayne Causey. Wayne throws him out. One away in the fourth inning. Here's Don Mencher, who doubled his first trip to the plate. Say, the A's have some new ticket locations this year and certainly some very well-placed ticket locations for the convenience of our fans all around the greater Kansas City area. We'll give you the locations where you can buy tickets of all future Kansas City A's games. One of our new ticket offices is on the Blue Ridge Mall, the center office number 55, out in the Independence area. Here's a pitch to Mencher. Fastball tails off away from him, ball one. The A's have a ticket outlet in the Cats Drug Store in North Kansas City at 1914 Swift Avenue. Open regular hours. You can buy A's tickets there almost any hour. Here's a pitch. Outside, ball two. Another Cats Drug Store with a great big A's ticket selling sign out on their billboard, 75th and Metcalf people in the Johnson County area. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Mencher takes a whack at it and hits it up into the air behind the shortstop position. The wind is bringing it back onto the dirt part of the infield and Causey stays right with it to make the catch. So there are two out in the fourth and here's Jimmy Hall. The Athletics have a ticket office in downtown Kansas City. If you happen to be in that area and would like to buy tickets for opening night next Tuesday at Macy's. And uh, out in Kansas City, Kansas at the Townhouse Hotel. And the Plaza ticket office at 4628 Warnell Road. As well as the ticket office at the stadium. All hits a fly ball. Foul territory. Near the A's dugout. Ed Charles, A's third baseman over there. He's got it. And the sign is retired in order here in the fourth inning of the ball game. So the Twins don't score, and it remains the same. Kansas City 1, Minnesota 1. 
Romani, let's once again check in on our A scoreboard. In the American League, after five innings, the New York Yankees lead the Detroit Tigers 1-0 on Joe Pepitone's home run. That's Ford against Lolich. Baltimore and Boston, now after six, is tied up. 3-3, Barber versus Wilson. The Robinson boys have struck. Brooks in the first with nobody on. Frank hitting a fifth inning homer, none on. California, Chicago, no score after three and a half. Chance, Euling, John. Yesterday, Cleveland bested Washington 5-2. McDowell over Rickard, Frank Howard a home run. In the National League, there's only one game that will be played this afternoon. The Cubs in San Francisco, Brolio versus Marichal. Houston, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and Philadelphia, St. Louis all will play tonight. Jack Fisher and Milt Pappas will have to wait another day. The Mets in Cincinnati have been rained out for the second time now, and it's the first time since the year 1913 Cincinnati has been rained out. Stahl leads off for the Athletics here in the fifth inning of the ball game. Dave, if you'd like to know more about Larry Stahl, a rookie with the A's this year, and all the other Kansas City A's players, a reminder that the A's yearbook is off the presses now, and fans who have ordered these books by mail should be receiving them this week. Here's a pitch to Larry Stahl, and it's a strike from Mudcat Grant. If you fans have not ordered as yet, do so soon by sending your check or motor money order for 75 cents to yearbook, Kansas City A's Municipal Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. Sharp breaking curveball, swung on and missed by Stahl. It's no balls, two strikes. That yearbook this year is a dandy. It's got some new features in it that you've never seen in an A's yearbook before, plus lots of pictures of the A's, players, and families, complete backgrounds of all the Kansas City players. The 0-2 pitch, wasted outside, ball one. Fifth inning on a beautiful day in Minnesota. I say beautiful, it's clear, it is cold. The high is forecast 50 degrees. 1-2 pitch, curve high, ball two. The A's worked out here in Minnesota yesterday in temperature 42 degrees. They had a short batting practice. 2-2 pitch. Larry hits the drive to right field. Right straight at Tony Oliva, who makes the grab. One away. A's second baseman, Dick Green, comes up now. Twins one and the Athletics one. Twins flying the pennant of the American League champions. Green, it's a sharp ground ball past third base. Foul, strike one. American League President Joe Cronin is here today. He was here to help in the pennant raising ceremonies. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 fans. The Twins have never had a crowd opening the season of over 24,000. Of course, game that will be played this afternoon. The Cubs in San Francisco, Brolio versus Marichal. Houston, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and Philadelphia, St. Louis all will play tonight. Jack Fisher and Milk Pappas will have to wait another day. The Mets in Cincinnati have been rained out for the second time now, and it's the first time since the year 1913 Cincinnati has been rained out. Leads off for the Athletics here in the fifth inning of the ball game. Dave, if you'd like to know more about Larry Stahl, a rookie with the A's this year, and all the other Kansas City A's players, a reminder that the A's yearbook is off the presses now, and fans who have ordered these books by mail should be receiving them this week. Here's a pitch to Larry Stahl, and it's a strike from Mudcat Grant. If you fans have not ordered as yet, do so soon by sending your check or motor money order for 75 cents to yearbook, Kansas City A's Municipal Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. Sharp breaking curveball, swung on and missed by Stahl. It's no balls, two strikes. That yearbook this year is a dandy. It's got some new features in it that you've never seen in an A's yearbook before, plus lots of pictures of the A's, players, and families, complete backgrounds of all the Kansas City players. The 0-2 pitch, wasted outside, ball one.
Fifth inning on a beautiful day in Minnesota. I say beautiful, it's clear. It is cold. The high is forecast 50 degrees. One two pitch, curve high, ball two. The A's worked out here in Minnesota yesterday in temperature 42 degrees. They had a short batting practice. Two two pitch. Larry hits the drive to right field. Right straight at Tony Oliva, who makes the grab. One away. A second baseman Dick Green comes up now. Wins one and the Athletics one. Twins flying the pennant of the American League champions. Green, it's a sharp ground ball past third base. Foul, strike one. American League President Joe Cronin is here today. He was here to help in the pennant raising ceremonies. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 fans. The Twins have never had a crowd opening the season of over 24,000. But of course, that's highly attributable to the bad weather they ordinarily have up here this time of year. Before the year's over, they'll make up for what they don't have on opening day. One strike pitch to Green. Shortened up on the bat, fake to Bunn, and took it outside. One and one now. We're certainly highly encouraged about the great ticket sale we had in Kansas City for our athletics, and the A's will be coming home to start a series against the Twins and another against the White Sox next Tuesday night. One-one pitch. Fly ball hit on the infield to the right side. First baseman Don Mincher calling for it as it comes down about five feet from first base. Two away. And that brings to the plate third baseman Ed Charles. The Athletics have had only one base hit. A triple by Hershberger in the fourth inning. He was knocked in by Bill Bryan who grounded out to first base. The Twins have had only three hits, so the pitchers have taken over here this afternoon. Here's a pitch. Charles hits one high up into the air in a short right center field. Tony Oliva calling for it, having to move to his left now. He's got it. So the first half of the ball game is over. And the score in the middle of the fifth inning. The A's won and the Twins won. And now, fans, just for a moment, why don't you close your eyes and wrap your hand around a cold ham's beer and bend an ear to this. Listen. The land of sky blue waters is calling. From the land of sky blue waters comes the water best for brewing hams beer. Refreshing hams beer. The beer that's brewed with water best for brewing tastes best, refreshes you best. Only hams has that refreshing sky blue waters flavor. Every hams has it. Glass after glass after glass. The one right beer for those who want another. Hams taste so right, it bears repeating. Capturing the frosty refreshment of this land of magic enchantment. Hams beer, refreshing hams beer. go down the home stretch of the first ball game of the 1966 season and the guy is going to give you lots of pleasure doing lots of home stretches this year our new baseball broadcasting partner mighty fine fellow from down in new orleans recently chicago originally but let's turn him loose right now here's lynn ferris thank you very much Marty. hello again everybody earl fatty will lead off against mud cat <laughs> our catfish hunter takes a ball i knew we were going to get those fish mixed up Press making quite a bit of the fish element here. Catfish versus Mudcat. Batty has been up one time and hit into the only double play in the game. Next pitch. Smash to the ground in the hole. Foggy backhanded. He's going to have a long throw. He got him. What a scoop out of the dirt by our first baseman, Harrelson. Cause he made an outstanding play. And it was a tough one from the well. And in fairness to the Twins, perhaps uh, a faster man would have had an infield base. But the outs always look good, don't they? 
One gone. Bernie Allen will lead off. Will uh, come up to the plate now. One gone of a 1-1 ball game. Allen is one for one. Here's the pitch. There's a drive and a left center field in the alley. This could be real trouble. Turnable running to his right and gloves it. Line running grab by Jose Tartable as the A's continue to show that speed and defensive ability that Alvin Dark has been so emphatic on starting back in spring training from the very first day. It was Allen who started uh, the little uprising there in the third inning when he got a single to right field. When Hirschberger let it go by for an error, Allen went to second. It was sacrificed to third by Grant after Versailles grounded out. Val Espino brought him in with a single to left, and the Twins led one to nothing. Until the A's tied it up in the fourth on a triple by Hirschberger and an infield out by Bryant. Now the batter is Mudcat Grant. Takes a call strike. Nice breaking pitch right at the knees. A's won, and the Twins won. The curtain raiser of 1966. Youngster is all ready. He deals. Call strike again. Outside corner. Temperature 52 degrees at game time. The wind out of the east at 13 miles per hour. Now Hunter is ready. The pitch low. The wind is coming out of the left field corner. Blowing over... The double deck stands in left. It's changed a little bit since before game time. Curve hit on the ground toward third. Scooped up nicely by Charles. The throw in time. And the A's set down the Twins. Hunter now has retired seven in a row. Three up, three down. Nothing across. And the score after five full innings of play remains. Minnesota Twins won. The Kansas City A's won. Now. KCMO Confidential. 60 seconds inside a great radio station. It's early afternoon. The morning has melted away. Where does the time go? The neighbor lady drops in for coffee. A phone call from the Cub Master pleading for 10 mothers. A 45-minute conversation with an old high school chum just passing through town, who you never liked in the first place. A visit from your minister asking you to take over the entire vacation church school. A trucker unloads a cord of wood ordered in the dead of winter on your newly planted tomato bushes, and it's 70 degrees. And your husband has just called and said he's bringing the boss home for dinner, and the house still needs cleaning. And you're frantic, and you don't know how you're going to make it through the day. Hi, welcome to the Dan Ronald Show. Ah. There's help. Dan Ryan and his velvet voice from 2 to 5 every afternoon. This has been KCMO Confidential. 60 seconds inside a great radio station. Next inning, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Kansas City Athletics Baseball Network. This KCMO Radio 81, Kansas City, Missouri. Mid-America's important news station. 44 degrees, now 231. At Metropolitan Stadium in the Twin Cities, this is Lynn Ferris with Monty Moore. Hoping you're enjoying our broadcast, fans, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. This game at all athletics games are brought to you by Ham's Beer. Have a ham. Pitcher versus pitcher. Catfish Hunter pops one up on the left side of the infield. Versailles is there. He's got it. So Hunter, who had sacrificed his only previous trip in the third inning is the first out here in the top of the sixth and this ball game is really sailing out of the top of the batting order jose tartable 0 for two he fly to center and ground it out a's have one hit but it was a big one a triple by hirschberger who came in on an infield out by bill bryant one one ball game the speedster tartable at the plate fans here seeing an outstanding pitcher's duel there's a call strike on the outside corner says larry knapp calling the balls and strikes John Rice at first base, Al Salerno at second, Jim Odom at third. Those are your American League umpires for this series. Outside and lower ball. Killebrew at third, Versailles at short, Allen at second, Mincher at first, Val Espino in left, Hall in center, Oliva in right, Earl Batty back of the plate, and Grant on the mound. The pitch, curve is swung on, and a lighter down the right field line, fair ball. And it's going into the corner. Look at Tartabal go around first. Ball fielded by Oliva, and Jose has a double. He goes in standing up, and that's only the second hit of Mudcat Grant. Tartable laced up beauty just inside the line. 
Don't expect to hear too many uh, cheers when the uh, A's do something outstanding. I don't have to tell you the rabid followers here in the Twin City. Now the batter, Mike Hirschberger. He owns the only other hit off Grant. Pitch is swung on and a pop foul back of first out of play. Leonis Hershberger has really had a fine spring with the bat. He has taken it very slowly with his arm. He has, uh, of course, not extended it any since he did have the operation on the winter on his throwing elbow. But he has really had a great swing down there. And, you know, there are some have said that maybe his protecting his arm a little bit has made him cut down on his swing and develop a better swing at the plate. Grant steps off the slab, and Hershberger is tired of waiting. Action here in the same ballpark tomorrow and on Thursday. Friday is an off day, and then the A's invade White Sox Park, Chicago. Single game Saturday, a twin bill on Sunday. Now here's Hirschberger with a chance to drive in a run. The pitch, there's a bouncer toward short. Versailles going to his right, juggles the ball, and Hirschberger's on. It's a base hit. Turnable. Did not try to leave second, and I think Versailles took his eye off the ball. He was very concerned about Partable at second base. And in so doing, juggled the baseball, but they rule it a base hit. Since it went into the hole, and the shortstop had to go to his right. Runners at first and second now, hit number three off Grant, and Wayne Causey's at the plate over two. Takes a strike call to the knee. Grant peers in to get his sign from batting. Deals. Low a ball. The count is one and one. One man up. The game is tied 1-1. We're playing in the top half of the sixth inning. A's did very well against this ball club last year. Better than Minnesota fans would like to recall. Here's the stretch and the pitch. There's a low liner towards short grab by Versailles over the second out back over the first inning. And a snappy double play gets the Twins out of trouble here. So the A's in the top of the sixth. No runs, two hits, no errors, one left. The score after five and a half innings of play remains. Kansas City A's won, the Minnesota Twins won. When your thirst sends out a call for real refreshment, answer it with a call for refreshing hands beer, like this. The call to flavor refreshing from the land of sky blue water. From the land of sky blue water, come the water best for brewing. And the beer refreshing, and the beer refreshing. The beer that's brewed with water best for brewing, tastes best, refreshes you best, glass after glass. Only Ham's beer has that sky blue water's flavor. Every Ham's has it, glass after glass. That's why Ham's is the one right beer for those who want another. Tastes so right, it bears repeating. Capturing for you the cool air. Well, to the bottom half of the sixth inning now, Wayne Causey getting into that inning-ending double play. And the A's had a chance to score. Each side now has three hits in the ball game. Top of the batting order, Versailles is up, takes low inside a ball. He'll be followed by Val Espino and Tony Oliva. Hits in this game for the Twins owned by Val Espino, Mincher, and Allen. Hunter is already, deals a curve, swung a little slow roller back to the mound. Over to first, he got him. A's hits, double by Tartabol, the triple, and single by Hershberger. Now Valdespino comes up. He flies to left field. That was a great catch Larry Stahl made. Gee, that was a beauty. And he's made so many of them in spring training. I can't recall him dropping one yet throughout spring training. And a sensational catch today. 
Al Espino is one for two. Takes low, a ball. It was his single that brought in Allen with the first run of the ball game in the third inning. It's one and one here in the Twin Cities in the sixth. Brian flashes the sign. Here comes the pitch. Fly ball. Left field. Stahl is there. Drifting to his right. He has it. Two gone will bring up Tony Oliva, who is fly to center and grounded out. See Mo Drabowski, former Kansas City A's pitcher, who was drafted by Baltimore over the winter, has just gone into the ballgame in the eighth inning for Hank Bauer's Baltimore Orioles in relief against Boston. Now Hunter taking his time. He has all set, winds and deals. Swing and a miss. Catfish says the only way to pitch to Oliva is just throw the ball and hope. He says you've got to move it around on this guy. The American League batting champion of 1965. He hit 262 against Kansas City pitching last year. 15 runs batted in. And four homers. Pitch on the way, hot smash on the ground. What a stop by Green as he goes to his knees. Over to first, he got him. Three up and three down, and the 20-year-old youngster continues to sail along. He's now retired the last 10 men whom he's faced. The score after six full innings of play remains Kansas City A's one, and the Minnesota Twins one. The first game of the season. No matter how many baseball games you watch or listen to, there's something special about opening day. Everybody starts all even again, and hope runs high for players and fans alike. Today, our good friends at Traders National Bank welcome the A's and baseball back to action. During the season, we'll be bringing you regular messages from Traders, so we hope all you fans will get acquainted real soon with Traders National, the service bank of Kansas City, grand at 12th. Well, fans of the Kansas City Athletics return back home to the Municipal Stadium in Kansas City. We'll play these twins at 7 o'clock next Tuesday night. Plenty of good choice seats are available. We'd love to have that ballpark completely filled up to start off our season. The show the A's will be behind them all the way. We'll play the twins again on Wednesday night the 20th. Then the Chicago White Sox are in town for a weekend series on Friday night the 22nd, Saturday night the 23rd, and Sunday afternoon the 24th. Here are the six inning totals on the ball game. The Kansas City A's have one run on three hits. They've committed one error and left two men on base. The Minnesota Twins, one run, three hits, no errors. They've left two men on base. You know, talking about Oliva as we were a moment ago, it's interesting to note that he had a rough time against Kansas City pitching. There's only one ball club against which he had a worse time, and that was the California Angels. He hit just 228 against them and 262 against uh, the A's. First pitch is on its way, a called strike, and a batter is Bill Bryant. He's 0 for 2. He drove in a run. And that's unusual because the year before, Tony's first year in the American League, he hit right at 500. I think it was 484 or 485 against us for the year. Next pitch, low a ball. Well, you know, Monty, he hit the Boston Red Sox, Baltimore Orioles, Detroit Tigers, and the New York Yankees and Senators like he owned them. Batted 4-0-3 against Boston. Now the 1-1 pitch to Bryan. Swing and a miss. He'll be followed to the plate by Harrelson and Larry Stahl. 1-1 one one here in the Twin Cities. Bryan is 0-2, but he drove in an important run in the fourth after Hershberger had tripled. Now Grant is ready. He delivers. There's a bouncer hit into the hole as on the right side. Mincher cuts it off over to the pitcher on a nice play. They got him. Allen started for the ball. Mincher cut in front of him and made the play. One out. Ken Harrelson has struck out and grounded out. Grant was beaten twice last year by the Athletics. He was able to win only once, and that was in Kansas City when he beat John O'Donohue 3-1 to one on July 2nd. Pitch on its way, lower ball. 
Both of the games he lost was right here. Boswell and Ragenberg working in the bullpen for the Twins. There's a ball. Just the outside corner, just below the knees. The A's have activity out there now. That bullpen is in deep right center, behind the fence, and just in front of the scoreboard. Dixon and Lindblad are throwing. Or Do Dobson, that is. That's Chuck Dobson. Pop-up foul territory between third and home. Killebrew's there, so is Batty. Batty has it. So Harrelson pop foul for out number two, and it will bring up Larry Stahl. He's over two. He's lined the right and popped out to Killebrew. Both of those games, Grant lost to the A's last year. We're right here in this ballpark. He started four games against Kansas City, was able to complete only one. There's a line drive down the right field line, curving foul. Stahl laid the wood to it. Kansas City marksman tagged Grant for 24 hits in 23 innings. Better than a hit an inning, and they uh, nailed him for three home runs. Now the one strike pitch outside, one and one. Score of the ball game. Nobody on, two away. We're in the top of the seventh. Wind up in the pitch outside. Camilo Pasquale, nine and three last year. Slated to go tomorrow against Raleigh Sheldon, who was 10 and eight. Then on Thursday, expected to be 18 game winner Jim Cott against Fred Talbot, who was 10 and 12. Swing and a miss and a let up curveball. Grant gave him a lot of motion. The count is two and two. Brisk wind continues to blow across the field left to right. Here it comes. Outside, and it's three and two. Cat Grant, native of Ohio, offers the 3-2 pitch. It's fouled off to the left. The pitcher of the year in 1965, 21 wins, 7 losses. Six of those 21 victories were shutouts. The 3-2 pitch again. Inside, he walked in. We have a delay in the ball game. Let's pause for half a minute. Need a truck or van for a day or so? Contact Valentine Drive Yourself, 3626 Main and 500 West 4th Street. Valentine stands ready seven days a week to rent any size truck or van and for any distance, whether it's by the hour, day, week, or year. Valentine Drive Yourself specializes in long-term leases on heavy equipment. They'll even custom engineer a fleet of trucks to your specification, including painting and lettering. If you want guaranteed service and low cost, reserve now by calling Jefferson 1-2500. Valentine Drive Yourself, 3626 Main and 500 West 4th. Dick Green is the batter. Here comes the pitch. Inside and high. Ball one. Larry Stahl at first base. Two men out here in the top of the seventh inning. 1-0, the count on Green. That walk to Stahl was the second. The hard-throwing right-hander is issued. Here it comes. It's up high again. And now the shortstop, Ursias, trots in toward the mound to say a few words to his pitcher. You know, the only guys able to beat this fella last year were Cleveland's Piant, the Yankees' Whitey Ford, Kansas City's Diego Segui, and uh, Catfish Hunter. The Yankees' Mel Stottlemyre. John Buzzhart of the, uh, in the, of the uh, White Sox, and Aubrey Gatewood of the Angels. Two and zero, the count. Stahl is an important man over there at first base. 
Ran into the stretch. Here it comes. Swung on at a drive in a left center field. Valespino going to his left. Paul to his right. He falls in a base hit. Stall around second. Turing for third. And he goes in standing up. The throw comes in. And is cut off just back of the mound. Boy, talk about the reinforcement. Batty was there. Grant. Boy, talk about the reinforcement. Batty was there. Grant was there. Mincher there. Of course, that's Mincher's position. Come in and cover on that play. That's only the fourth hit. Well, the A's take the lead in that category. Twins have just three hits off Hunter. Now the A's have runners at first and third, and it brings up Ed Charles, who has walked and fly to right. Charles waits at the plate. Here's the pitch. He started to go and held up a ball. Ed batted 245 against this ball club last year. He had 13 hits and 53 trips. One homer and eight RBIs. Grant has slowed up a little bit now. He's moving around in that mound, taking a little more time. Peers in for a sign. Deal. Smash on the ground towards short. Versailles has it over to second for the fourth play. So an opportunity is lost in the top of the seventh. No run score. One hit, no errors, and two are left. And after six and a half innings of play, the score, Minnesota Twins won, the Kansas City A's won. In an action-packed game like baseball, it takes only seconds for the ball to leave the bat and swiftly wing its way over the outfield fence. It takes you only seconds to reach into your refrigerator for another Ham's beer. Have a Ham's right now before play gets underway. Ham's is the one right beer for those who want another. And that's because hands is brewed from water that's for brewing. So go ahead, have a hand, and how about a little music to wing you on the way to the kitchen? From the land of sky blue water, comes the water that's for brewing. And the beer refreshing, and the beer refreshing, capturing for you the coolness of blue the sunset breeze. Well, the fans here in the Twin Cities getting a big kick out of the musical accompaniment from the organ. And they're foot stopping. And Harmon Killebrew, Don Mincher, and Jimmy Hall face 20-year-old catfish hunter. The youngster has been most impressive today. Here's a pitch outside in the low ball. We talked a lot in Florida about his opening night assignment, about which he knew, uh, oh, some two and a half weeks ago. He was eagerly awaiting it. Here it comes, outside, hemp speed curve. guy like Chillabrew, that's the way you got to pitch him or try to jam him. The count is 2-0. Oh. 1-1 one, one ball game. We're in the seventh. Here it comes. Oh, strike. Nice curveball. Boy, he's had a great curveball today, Lance. And it has really been his savior. He's had a good fastball, but he's had that curveball. He's breaking so sharply several times, they've hit it right off the end of the bat, right back to him. He's really had a breaker. Now Hunter is set, and the 2-1 pitch is on its way. Foul back against the screen. Al Espino, Mincher, and Allen own the only three base hits off the native North Carolinian who has retired the last ten men whom he's faced. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Bouncer foul on the third base line. Billy Martin made a half-hearted effort to stop it. Decided he wouldn't take a chance on uh, injuries to his knuckles, so he just let it sail by. Metropolitan Stadium today is Gailey decked out in red, white, and blue bunting. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He got him! A pretty curveball, let her high, and Killebrew knew it. That breaking pitch again, just not throwing hard on the half-speed variety. 
Danny really caught him looking that time. That's the first time today Catfish has dropped down sidearm, and he went sidearm, and Killebrew went back on his heels. That was Phil on the bench and knew it. That's his first strike out of the game, but it was a big one. Yes, and he picked a good spot to get it. Mincher, one for two at the plate now. Bats left-handed. It's a fly ball in the left center field. Going to his left is Stahl, waiting. He has it. Two gone. And it will bring to the plate Jimmy Hall, who has walked and fouled out. Checking the Kansas City A's American League scoreboard. The Detroit Tiger-New York Yankee game is still tied up 1-1 after six and a half. Pepitone is homered for the Bombers. Ford versus Lulich. Baltimore Boston knotted up a 3-3 at the end of seven. Barber against Wilson. The Robinson boys have homered. Here's the pitch. Low a ball. He started to go check his swing. Grabowski is in relief of Barber. Angels got a run in the fifth. They lead the White Sox 1-0. That came on Adcock's homer. Now, wait a minute. Adcock has homered in the sixth with nobody on. So California leads by at least 2-0. The pitch fouled back against the screen. Cleveland, Washington have the day off. In the National, Houston and the Dodgers, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Phillies and the Cardinals playing at night. The Mets and Cincinnati have been rained out for the second day in a row. Only the Cubs and Giants are playing this afternoon. Now the 1-1 pitch. There's a drive and it's deep right center field. Hershberger going way back and so is part of Bull and Jose's got it on a warning pass. All tagged one well. Three up, three down, nothing across. And the score after seven full innings remains. Kansas City A's won. The Minnesota Twins won. Who uses Muzak? Nationally, 23 of the 25 largest industrial companies use Muzak. 38 of the 50 largest commercial banks use Muzak. 21 of the 25 largest life insurance companies use Muzak. Does this mean that you should use Muzak? Not necessarily, but you do owe it to yourself and your company to explore the benefits of Muzak's scientifically programmed background work music. Muzak is planned to combat work attention and increase efficiency. Studies by independent management engineers prove the effectiveness of music by Muzak in raising the efficiency of leading offices and plants. Whether your business is large or small, if you have people working for you, you have an application for Music by Muzak. You have no worries about purchasing equipment because KCMO Business Music Services provides the Muzak, the equipment, the engineering, the installation, and the maintenance. We can prove all claims about the sound you can see on your balance sheet. Music by Muzak. Call KCMO Business Music Services at Baltimore 1 1515 for Muzak. Well, we're ready to go for action in the top half of the eighth inning. Hunter, Tartable, and Hershberger will lead away against Muttcat Grant. Mentioning that rain out, Cincinnati had. I said earlier it's the first time since they've been rained out, or the first time since the year 1913. I meant, of course, on opening day. And now they got another one today. Here's the first pitch. Inside and low, a ball. Yes, indeed. 1913. Since then. There's a drive in the right center field. It's falling in a base hit. And Catfish Hunter helps his own cause. Getting a base hit, which is number five off Grant. So we'll bring up Jose Tartable as the A's have another opportunity here now. In the eighth inning. Boy, what a pitcher's duel is this. The only reason the uh, of the twin bullpen has just gotten up and gone to work for the first time. Mudcat did not go this far in any spring game, so uh, since he did got down there a couple of weeks late, he may be tiring a little. Now Tartable at the plate tries to bunt. It goes foul off to the left. Strike one. And Hunter, who now has donned his green jacket, was all the way to second. Jose is one for three in the game. I might point out, uh, talking about that Cincinnati game, it was not a regularly scheduled game. It was rescheduled from yesterday. Those uh, Mets and Reds will play tomorrow night. Take over to first base. It's close. He got it. Hunter went diving back 
again. Al Vincent tolering about it, the first base coach. Al Dark, one step on the, or one foot on the dugout steps is not moving. And that's a big play, Monty. A pickoff, a runner by Jim Grant. Grant has about as good a motion as any right-hander, but I'll tell you this, uh, it is, just as you said, a mighty big play. One strike count on Tartable. Pitch is swung out and fouled off to the left. You get a tight ball game like this and a real close pitcher's the all. And those plays become the big ones because they can open things up. Speaking of opening things up, fans, how about having a hand? For that frosty, cool, sky blue water's flavor. Remember, hands is brewed with water, best for brewing. Your host for all A's games at home and away. The pitch is outside and low a ball. The count is one and two on Tartable. One out, eighth inning, one one game. There's a liner toward short, and it's grabbed by Versailles. Two out. We'll bring up Hirschberger, who's two for three with a single and a triple. He scored the A's only run in the fourth inning when Brian brought him in on an infield out. Well, the pickoff play changes the whole complexion of the inning. Uh, Tarnival was all out going to try to sacrifice, and of course Jimmy got caught cheating a little bit, trying to get a little head start on the punt, and just got shot down. Changes the strategy, as you point out. Every uh, batsman coming up now has to do things differently. That's fouled back into the screen. Strike one. I'll be on following this game, fans, with a complete wrap-up of the scores of all the other games at both the National and American League. That's high, a ball. Don't forget that every A's ball game is preceded by Marty's pregame show. Today he had on the Georgia Peach, Lucius Luke Appling. I bet you could have talked with him for five hours, Marty. You could have listened that long. <laughs> Outside and low a ball on a slow breaking pitch. Boy, this guy has stories. 10,000 miles long, it seems, and they're all colorful. Two and one, the count. A's won, the Twins won. We're playing in the eighth inning. The pitch, a drive hit out on the left center field. Could be trouble. Val Espino going to his left. Reaches up and grabs. First burger gets robbed on a flying running grab by Val Espino. No runs on one hit. No errors and one left. And the score after seven and a half innings remains Kansas City A's won and the Minnesota Twins won. Now here's the story of a land of magic enchantment, a land where refreshment rules supreme. The Tom Tom's echoing can you, a sky blue water dribbling coolly by you. They're singing, they're bringing cool refreshment to you. Come the land of sky blue water, come the water, best for brewing hands, beer, refreshing hands, beer. The beer that's brewed with water best for brewing tastes best, refreshes you best. And only Hams has that sky blue water's flavor. Every Hams has it, glass after glass. That's why... Twins won. We're playing in the eighth inning. The pitch, a drive hit out on the left center field. Could be trouble. Val the speed up going to his up. Reaches up and grabs. gets robbed on a fine running grab by Val Espino. No runs on one hit, no errors and one left. And the score after seven and a half innings remains Kansas City A's one and the Minnesota Twins one. Now here's the story of a land of magic enchantment, a land where refreshment rules supreme. The Tom Tom's echoing tell you a sky blue water dribbling coolly by you. They're singing, they're bringing cool refreshment to you. The beer that's brewed with water best for brewing tastes best, refreshes you best. And only Hams has that sky blue water's flavor. Every Hams has it, glass after glass. 
That's why Ham's is the one right beer for those who want another. Tastes so ripe, it bears repeating. From the land of sky blue waters comes the water best for brewing. Ham's beer, refreshing Ham's beer. into the bottom half of the eighth inning. And it will be Earl Batty, Bernie Allen, Mike Cat Grant, you up. We could get a pinch hitter for him. Batty has hit into a double play and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Hunter looks him over. Deal. Foul back against the screen. Strike one. You possibly heard that. Today's paid attendance here at Metropolitan Stadium for the home opener, 21,658. Next pitch is low. The count is one and one. That's an outstanding crowd. I, as I recall, the record here for a home opener is 24,000. So that's just three short for our A's here to open the season. Now the one-one pitch inside. Gee, this has been a tight ball game. The A's are ahead in hits. They have five off Grant, including two for extra bases, a double by Tartable, a triple by Hirschberger. Hunter has allowed just three hits to the Twins. Now the 2-1 offering. Way inside. Hunter has retired 13 men in a row. The last man to get on base was Valdez Spino in the third inning. Here's the 3-1 pitch. There's a bouncer toward short. It's grabbed by Conti, the peg. He got it. Now we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Kansas City Athletics Baseball Network. This is KCMO, Radio 81, Kansas City, Missouri. Now four minutes past three o'clock, 45 degrees under cloudy skies. The batter is Bernie Allen. He scored Minnesota's only run. He's one for two. Here's a pitch. Called strike to the left-handed batter. They're making the announcement that this is the third largest crowd for opening day in Twins history. One out. Allen at the plate. The pitch. There's a oh, look out. A drive in a deep right center. Way, way back. Hershberger going back. He's got it. Allen tagged it. He had singled in the first inning and gone to second when Hertzberger let that ball get by him for an error. But Mike came through this time. Two gone. Grant is due up. He will bat. One ball game. Pitcher faces pitcher. Here it comes. Called strike at the knee. Gee, that's Hunter. He has been tremendous today. Well, we hope you're enjoying the broadcast wherever you are, whatever you're doing this afternoon. Now the next pitch fouled off to the right. Remember that we'll be home on April 19th to open against these same Minnesota Twins. We hope you'll plan to be with us at Municipal Stadium. have Charles at third, Causey at short, Green at second, Harrelson at first. Stahl in left, Carnival in center, Hirschberger in right, Bill Bryant back of the plate, and 20-year-old Jim Hunter on the mound. All nine men started, and they're in there now. I can't think of any better idea right now than to have a hand from the land of sky blue water. Side arms him outside. You know, in a tense ball game like this, or at any other time of the year, day or night, Hams refreshes your best. Here's the one-two pitch outside. Hunter's coming in with that great big curveball. those of you who joined us late, we've made mention of this a couple of times. We don't want to jinx this boy, but the Twins have never beaten Hunter. The 
pitch. He got him on a call strike three. And that strikeout number two. 16 men in a row, he's now retired. Three up, three down, nothing across. After eight full innings of play, the score, Twins won, the A's won. Now, KCMO Confidential. 60 seconds inside a great radio station. You're in your car. All day long, you've been at work, out of touch. Traffic is terrible. You're wondering what's been going on. How are things in Vietnam? What's the latest quotation on your stock? The score of last night's big game. If you find the time, how's the fishing? What's going on in Kansas City News? These questions are driving you insane. What to do? Suddenly, there's relief. Blessed and comforting relief as the deep tones of Dan Ronald waft from your car radio. KCMO, Buffalo Buffalo News Time, 4.55. John Flynn, KCMO News Service. Financial Edition, Don Johnson, KCMO News Service. Sportsbook with Bruce Wright. 5.30, here's Harold Ensley. Hi again, everybody. Isn't it good to know someone cares? This has been KCMO Confidential. 60 seconds inside a great radio station. Ready to go in the top half of the ninth inning. The plot thickens in this pitcher's duel. Lynn Ferris with Monty Moore. On opening day of 1966, Wayne Causey, Bill Bryan, and Ken Harrelson face Mudcat Grant. Here's the first pitch. Strike call. Causey has not been able to uh, get the ball up in the air today. He's grounded out three times, once for a double play. Each side has a twin killing. Grant looks him over and delivers. There's a liner to center field. Face hit. Grabbed on one hop by Hall. Well, Monty, there's a case where uh, people say, uh, if you say things like he's retired the last 16 men in a row and the 17th man gets a base hit, you've jinxed him. You can just work in reverse. You can do that from up here. Let me know. We can use you this spring. <laughs> there's going to be some times when we want to jinx somebody. Well, Wayne hadn't been able to get a ball up in the air or out of the infield, and he just now did, and it's hit number six. Off Grant, the A's have out-hit this ball club 6-3, to three, but the score is tied 1-1. One and one. Bill Bryan at the plate, he's driven in, the A's only run. Infield in tight. Grant stretches and deals. Bunt, fouled off to the right. Twenty-one thousand six hundred fifty-eight. The paid attendance. And it was 52 degrees at game time. Ryan waits. Here it comes. Smash on the ground for second. Allen has it. Over to Versailles for one. Back to first. Double play. So the Twins come up with just that. A twin killing. And it's their second of the afternoon. The A's have had uh, men on base now in every inning except the fifth on the fourth inning on. In other words, the fourth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and here in the ninth. Batter is Harrelson. Hop fouls one off to the right. It's going out of play. But the opportunity in the sixth with one out after Tartable double and Hershberger single was erased by Causey's uh, hitting into the double play. There's another pop foul off to the right, and they won't be able to get this one. Then with two gone in the seventh, Stahl walked in green single, but Charles ended the inning, hitting into a force play. Hunter let off the eighth with a single, but got picked off at first. Here in the ninth, Causey single, but Brian hits into the double play. They would like to tell those fellows driving those hamstrucks down at Mid-America to work a little harder today. We have some supervisors from the brewery right here with us. That pitch is in the dirt. A ball. And Lynn Johnson, director of marketing, is uh, here with us to say hello today. And uh, Bill Bandy of the Campbell Methuen Agency and Frank Rolfus and John Callahan are all here with us. And I uh, uh, want to pass along uh, hello to everybody back in Mid-America on those big ham trucks. There's a bouncer toward short. Versailles charging his backhand it over the first. He got him. A great play by Versailles on a tough ball to handle and throw and a fine scoop up by Mincher. 
No runs, one hit. No errors, none left. After eight and a half innings of play, the score, the Twins won, the Athletics won. This message is for men who don't smoke. You've read the news stories. You know the facts. You know that you have a better chance to live longer and enjoy life more than the man who smokes. Then, isn't it about time somebody rewarded the non-smoker by reducing his life insurance rate? Somebody has. Farmers Insurance Group. We read those statistics, too. We know you're a better risk. That's why we've pioneered a new non-smoker policy that insures your life for a lot less money. Let me repeat. If you don't smoke, Farmer's new non-smoker policy will insure your life for a lot less money. You may claim your reward from any farmer's agent. He's in the yellow pages under Farmer's Insurance Group. Have a nice day. beginning to whoop it up here in the bottom half of the ninth inning as the Twins will send the top of their batting order for Zayas, Val Espino, and Oliva up to face Gatfish Hunter. And you really have to admire this youngster. What a job he's done this afternoon. For Zayas, is 0 for 3. Here's the windup and the pitch. Lola ball. Hunter has retired the last 16 men in a row. Here's the next pitch. Curve misses. Breaking too soon to the right-handed batter. It's 2-0. Oh. A's had uh, good fortune against Versailles last year. He hit just 2-10 in 18 ball games against Kansas City pitching. That's a little bit low outside for ball three. balls, no strikes. One, one ball game. Bottom half of the ninth inning. Brian gives the sign, and here it comes. Way inside. He walked him on four pitches. So Versailles becomes the first man to get on base since Val Espino back in the third inning. And that's only the second walk by Hunter. Jim Hall worked him for a base on balls in the second. Well, the twin speed right now can start to show, Lynn. They're right in the part of their batting order where they can do some things with the men they have. Versailles, for instance, is one of their best base runners. Val Espino is an excellent runner and a very, very fast man. And with the number three hitter, Oliva, coming up, they can operate here in the ninth inning. And this is the kind of work that uh, manager Sam Mealy uh, last year won a lot of ball games with. John Wyatt's going to work out in our bullpen, too, by the way. I was just about to say to the real fan who follows this great game, this is the type of situation that gives you goosebumps when the leadoff man in the ninth gets on, particularly with a walk. Here's the pitch. Called strike. The whole infield full in. Charles was almost close enough to shake the hand of Al Espino. Harrelson wasn't more than a 15-foot putt shot. One strike count. Versailles at first. He can fly. He's anticipating that bunt now. The pitch on its way. Bunts it, foul off the plate, comes back and hits him in the left leg. And now Hunter is out front. A lot of things can happen in this situation with the infield being broken up like that. Val Espino has all kinds of room to shoot a bouncer through the infield if he elects to swing. I don't think they'll crash uh, with that suicide defense now and two strikes that they have been, but they still have to guard against the bunt. A concerned Alvin Dark with his foot on the dugout steps. Here's a pitch, throws it away, it's way outside. And here goes Versailles racing around second. He's going to hold up. Ryan retrieves the ball. And it's a wild pitch. Now the A's have trouble. So it's one and two. Hunter 
tried to waste one, and waste one he did. The pitch got away from him. It was outside and high to Brian's left. 1-1 one, one ball game. Nobody out. Ninth inning. Runner at second base. Brian gives the all-important sign. The 1-2 pitch. Hot smash in the game. Through a hole in the right field. Hershberger charging the ball. Here's a strong throw. Going to be close. He flies safely. for Kansas City and particularly Catfish Hunter. He deserves a better fate. And it's a great win for the Minnesota Twins and it's always great to start off your home season particularly when you're American League champions with a victory. So Val Espino wins the ball game with a shot in the right field which is only the fourth hit off Hunter. No outs in the ninth inning as Versailles scores the winning run. A two-to-one ball game, Minnesota winning it. And now for the wrap-up, and remember that I'll follow with a complete scoreboard following the game. Once again, here's Monty. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Little things mean a lot in close ball games, and of course, when Catfish Hunter walks for size to start the ninth inning, that's one of the little things that Catfish does very little of. As a matter of fact, he only walked two batters the entire ball game. But the big thing that came about caused the athletics infield to have to start moving around a little bit, and that was with two strikes on Val Espino. Catfish threw a fastball high and away. The ball actually hit the mitt of Bill Bryant, and it looked as if he might have been able to catch the ball or at least knock it down, but uh, he went on back to the screen. That allowed Versailles to go into second base, and then Val Espino got the two-strike pitch and drilled it into right field. The Twins had taken a one nothing lead in this ball game in the third inning, scoring an unearned run when Richie Allen got a single, was sacrificed a second by Grant. Then a ball was hit by Val Espino into right field that was mishandled by Mike Hershberger, and the runner came in to score. That made it a one nothing game. The A's tied it up in the fourth inning when Hershberger came back to get a triple and scored on a ground out by Bill Bryan. That's all the scoring the A's could do, though they did threaten several times against Mudcat Grant. In the sixth inning, Causey hit into a double play with Tartable and Hershberger on to end a rally. And in the ninth inning, Bill Bryan hit into a double play with Wayne Causey on as a leadoff batter here in the ninth. The line score for the game for the winning Twins, two runs, four hits, and no errors. For the Kansas City Athletics, one run, six hits, and one error. The winning pitcher, Mudcat Grant, who takes up right where he left off last year, getting a victory. He is 1-0 and now, and Catfish Hunter is no wins, one loss. Both pitchers went all the way for outstanding performances here on opening day 1966 before 21,658 fans. So the final score again, the Twins 2 and the A's 1. This broadcast was authorized under rights granted by the Kansas City Athletics solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the consent of the Kansas City Athletics is prohibited. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 1.15 for the warm-up show and at 1.25 for the game when our A's once again beat the Minnesota Twins. Until then, Monty Moore with Lynn Ferris speaking, saying so long, everybody. This game came to you on the Kansas City Athletics Baseball Network. Today's game between the Kansas City Gays and the Minnesota Twins was brought to you in part by Hams, the beer refreshing for the land of sky blue waters. The beer that brings you the A's on radio and television. Hams, the beer that bears repeating. And by friendly Bob Adams in your 12 GFC loan company offices of the Kansas City area. This has been a sports presentation of KCMO Radio 81, Mid-America's all-time big-time sports station. This is Bob Richards. I'd like you to hear one of the most powerful sounds in nature, the ocean surf. That's tumbling, glistening, white-capped water. All power comes from the raw forces of nature, from water, sun, wind, soil. Raw power goes into food to power man. That's what creates basic foods like raw wheat. Just imagine, from this one food comes all these basics. Potent wheat germ, crude protein, natural sugars, vitamins, and minerals. You get the basics of raw wheat in Wheaties. If you're on the go, if you've got to produce hour after hour, get off to a good start every day. Stick to basics. Stick to Wheaties, breakfast of champions. 
This is KCMO Radio, dial 81, Kansas City, Missouri. Hello from the ballpark once again, everybody. It's time now for Baseball Scoreboard, a wrap-up of all the scores and highlights from both major leagues. Baseball Scoreboard is heard after every Kansas City A's game on KCMO Radio 81, Mid-America's all-time big-time sports station. Now, with all the scores and highlights of today's Major League games, here's Lynn Ferris. Hello again, everybody. Lynn Ferris back at Metropolitan Stadium in the Twin Cities with our scoreboard and our first one of the 1966 season. Here's the way games are shaping up now in the American League. At Yankee Stadium in New York, the Detroit Tigers have gotten a run in the ninth inning and they've taken a 2-1 to one lead over the New York Yankees. Lolich is on for the Tigers. Ford has been relieved by Pedro Ramos in the ninth inning. The Bombers now are batting. Joe Pepitone homered in the fifth with nobody on. So Detroit leads 2-1 to one with New York batting in the ninth. At Fenway Park in Boston, the Orioles have gotten a go-ahead run. Uh, check it. They've uh, been able to tie it up. It's a 4-4 ball game now with Boston batting in the bottom of the ninth. Wilson started against Barber, but several changes since then. Drabowski now pitching for Baltimore in the eighth inning. Raditz relieved Wilson in the ninth. Grilly came on for Raditz, and Osinski now is in action. Homer's in the ball game. The Robinson boys struck. Brooks in the first with nobody on. Frank in the fifth, none on. Two homers by the dynamic duos are being called. At White Sox Park, in Chicago, the Angels lead two to nothing after six and a half innings. Tommy Agee has homered in the seventh with one on just now, so that means it's tied up. It's a two-two game. Chance started against John. Locker now is in relief for the White Sox. Adcox homer in the sixth with nobody on was the second California run of the game. That was the only activity in the American League this afternoon. Yesterday, of course, Cleveland and Washington got things underway with the Indians' pinch-hitting strength showing and a 5-2 victory over the Senators. McDowell got the victory over Rickard Frank Howard Homer. Now, I'll be back in just one minute with scores of games played today in the National League. U.S. Saving Bond, move our country along. U.S. Saving Bond, keep America strong. It's a star playing way to a saving plan to keep our country secure for each and every man. So buy Saving Bond. Spangled saving plan for all Americans. United States saving bonds. They work hard, keeping our country strong, secure, and free. Now and in the years ahead. And when you buy U.S. saving bonds, you'll be building a strong financial future for yourself and your family. Buy U.S. saving bonds. The Star Spangled saving plan for all Americans. U.S. saving bonds help build our country. So buy saving bonds. There's only one game being played in the National League this afternoon. It's not yet underway, and that's at Candlestick Park, where the Chicago Cubs go with Jackson against 22-game winner Mari Schall. And that one, as I said, not yet underway. The Mets and Cincinnati Reds got rained out for the second day in a row, and that rain out was a rescheduled game from yesterday. It's the first time since the year 1913 that the Reds have not been able to play a home opener. Pittsburgh plays Atlanta tonight. In the Georgia Capitol, it's the first major league game in history, a regular season game in Atlanta. Veal, a 17-game winner, goes for the Pirates, and 24-game victor Tony Cloninger for the Braves. Philadelphia's Phillies will shoot 19-game winner Jim Bunning against the St. Louis Cardinals at Bush Stadium. Bob Gibson, a 20-game victor, goes for the Redbirds. And at Chavez Ravine, ageless Robin Roberts will hurl for the Houston Astros. He was 5-2 last year, and Claude Osteen for the Dodgers, a 15-game winner. That's the National League scoreboard. Here at Metropolitan Stadium today, the American League champions got off with a fine victory for them, a heartbreaking loss for Catfish Hunter. He deserved a better fate. With two out in the third inning, from that point on, he retired 16 men in a row, allowed only four hits in eight full innings, walked two, and struck out two. Jim Grant went all the way for the victory. The 1-1 game broken up in the ninth inning when Versailles walked, 
Only the second pass given since the uh, in the ball game by Hunter. He walked Hall in the second. Versailles went to second on a wild pitch, and Val Espino single to right field to bring him in. A's run came in the fourth when Hirschberger tripled and brought in by a Bill Bryan infield out. Be with us tomorrow now at 125 for the games between the Kansas City Athletics and the Minnesota Twins. Lynn Ferris saying so long, everybody. Lynn Ferris and the baseball scoreboard is a KCMO radio sports presentation following every Kansas City A's game. Be listening for the next scoreboard brought to you by your friendly, helpful, sightless paint dealers who sell satin tone, the latex easy pants. <laughs>